Okay, this is the Go book for uh, Microsoft Office 2010. We are in Access Chapter 1, and we're on Project 1A, and we're on Objective 3 and on page 452. And Activity 1.08 is uh, deleting a table field in Design View, and we're going to delete the middle initial this time. And I want to go to the Home tab up here, and in the Views group, I want to uh, click the view button arrow and we want to go to design view which is what we were looking at a few minutes ago. And we get a different way of looking at the table structure and in the field name uh, next to or next to the field name for middle initial here uh, we want to um, select it by uh, clicking the black arrow over here in the gray margin and uh, there's a couple of things we can do here. Uh, we can uh, right click and uh, choose delete or as the book says we can go up here and click on uh, delete rows. I like doing it this way so we're just going to click on delete rows and it says do we want to permanently uh, delete that data field and the answer is yes so middle initial is no longer in the table. And now we're in activity 1.09 which is modifying a field size and adding a description. Uh, now if you put uh, good field names over here then the odds are that you may not have to put anything over here in the description column but sometimes it's not uh, always obvious from the field name what's in the column so you may want to put a, a description over here from time to time. Um, now what we're going to do here is we go down to the state column here. Notice whenever I change a row up here which defines one of the columns in my table. The stuff down below changes. So um, these are properties of the state slash region column. And right now it's field size by default is always 255. And we're going to change that to a 2. I'm just going to hit backspace twice to delete the two fives. And then I'm going to click up here and we're going to put a uh, description here which says 2 character state abbreviation and then we go to the student ID field and um, we're going to change that field size to 7 so just drag your mouse over the 255 change it to 7 and uh, this is going to be 7 digit student ID number is the comment or the description. Um, I'm not sure that tells you much more than what we had over here in uh, the field name, but we'll go with it. Uh, in the faculty advisor field name box, uh, click down here and we change this to eight characters and the description is going to be eight character ID of the faculty member assigned as advisor and um, now we're going to click on the close button up here and it'll ask, automatically ask if you want to save the changes and we'll say yes and it says we might lose some data because we shortened those numbers from 255 to 2 and 7 and 8 but we know we're not going to lose any data because those are the right sizes so click on yes we do want to continue and now we're at the bottom of page 454, activity 1.10. And um, we're going to look at the primary key in design view. And a primary key is a field that will uniquely identify a row in a table. So we want to go to design view. Just right click, go to design view, and our screen should look like page 455 and um, there is a little yellow key there to the left of student ID and that tells us that this is a primary key which means that uh, it must be a unique number. I can't have two students with the same student ID number. And um, on the design view or the design tab rather um, 
in the views group which is over here notice the view button contains a picture of a data sheet indicating that clicking that button will return you to data sheet view so if I click on this uh, we're back to data sheet view which is basically spreadsheet view okay now we're on page 455 activity 1.11 and uh, we're going to add a second table by importing a spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to close this one for now since we're not using it. And we're going to go to our external data tab. And we're going to go to the import and link group. And we're going to get some external data from an Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to browse. And this time, the one that we want is uh, 01A Faculty. Go ahead and click on Open. And uh, what we're going to do this time is we're going to import it into a new table. Uh, each table should describe uh, one thing. We've got one table for students. We're going to have a different table for faculty. Um, and uh, so got the file name and we're going to make it a new table and we're going to click on OK. And now it wants to know uh, if the first row contains headings and it does. So turn that checkbox on and then click on Next. And then in um, the next window what it wants to do is it wants to know um, what type of text we've got for all of this stuff here. and um, I think all of it is going to be text, so um, we're going to leave that and uh, click on Next. And this is where it wants to know if we have a primary key that's already there. And remember, primary key has to be something that we uniquely identify a row in a table. And if you see the name ID as part of a column name, as in faculty ID, uh, that usually is a hint that that's going to be a key field. Um, so we're going to choose our own one here, and it's going to show us the list of existing fields, and faculty ID is the one that's unique. I could not pick um, most of these other ones. Well, I might be able to pick address, but you would never do that. Uh, professor is not unique. Uh, campus is not unique. Last name is probably not unique. Uh, first name is probably not unique. So we need something that's going to be unique in every row, and that's the faculty ID, and we can click on Next. And uh, then um, we're given in these tables the goofy names, so it's going to be a last name 1A, and followed by faculty. Uh, click Finish. And we're not going to worry about saving these steps because we're not going to be doing it again. Click on Close. And then over here in the navigation pane, um, I want um, to look at my faculty table. So double click on it, and there it is. They want us to close the navigation pane, so we'll close it. And then we want to go to the zip postal code, postal code, let's try that again, postal code field. And on the ribbon, click the fields tab. And in the formatting group, we want to change the data type to text. And that may not make any sense, but um, unless you're going to be doing arithmetic on a field like this, uh, you typically will make it a text field rather than a number field. Uh, now we're at the bottom of page 457, and we're talking about adjusting column widths. And uh, I want to click the Object tab for my 1A Students table. So uh, we need to go back here and click 1A Students. And um, we are opening that up. OK, he said click on the tab because he hadn't closed it now. Uh, if you've already closed it, there won't be a tab like this. And you'll just have to double click on it. And point to the right edge of the Address field. And we'll get a two-headed arrow, just like in Excel, just like in most Windows applications. A two-headed arrow means that you can resize. And uh, we're going to uh, double-click, and this works just like in Excel. If you double-click, it'll make it wide enough to accommodate the widest column. And um, we want to do the same thing with, uh, go to the phone number field here. And right-click 
to select the entire column and we'll get a pop-up menu and uh, we want to click field width and for column width um, we want to choose best fit which gives it a little bit more space and now we're going to go to the last three fields and we're going to click and drag with our fat black arrow pointing down and um, double click on any one of these just get a two-headed arrow here or here or over on the end and it will set that to the best fit which means it'll make it wide enough to show both the field name at the top and the widest data item down below scroll all the way to the left to view the student ID field which is right here and to the left student ID field click the select all button and that's this little button here it works just like it did in Excel uh, if you click on this little triangle here which is kinda hard to see um, it selects everything in the table and click the home tab and in the records group click the more button and um, click field width and then um, click best fit and it makes all of them best fit and in the first record it says scroll to the right so here's our first record scroll to the right is necessary and we're going to go to the amount owed field and our screen should now look like the bottom of page 458 and um, it says now we're going to click on the save button to save the table design changes and you, if you just click on close here it won't let you close it without giving you a chance to save your changes uh, but we'll click on the save button up here and it saves our changes and that's about 12 minutes so we will stop the video right there and continue in another video